All right, guys, Dust.il back for another review. And tonight we have the Ozark Trail Nameless. It's a 6.75 inch folding knife with stainless steel and camo handles. If you want to call that camo, but it, yeah. So I really uh, take an interest in kind of the budget knife world. I started with the Sun Cut review, which I just barely uploaded the uh, second half to. Uh, carried that for two weeks. It was really nice. And then I was thinking, you know, is that really the budget knife world? And I know someone like Metal Complex or Nisha Baz would call budget knives anything below um, $75. But a lot of people would say that a budget knife is something more like an open L, which is, um, you know, 17 bucks. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, every single day at Walmart, I, well, every single time I shop at Walmart, I pass by stuff like this. Um, and I know this is garbage compared to what I'm used to. But is it even worth the $5.75-ish cents that it cost me? We're going to find out. So I'm going to be opening this with a $75 knife. <laughs> um, Backlash, brass, my favorite knife, really. And, like, I started off with uh, a pretty cheap knife, but never anything like this. My first knife was actually a, a cheaper SOG. So, there's the packaging. If you want any of that, just pause. Um, so, what can you get for $5 at Walmart? Um, wow. Let's see. You can kind of flick it open. Um, if you lube it up, it'd probably do a little better. It's got some cheap, uh, you know that? What is that? It does not say the material, but it's a, I'm just going to go with the name of plastic. It doesn't feel like FRN though, surprisingly. Um, did it come sharp? The edge feels okay. The thumb stud is ambidextrous. It's a liner lock, which there's a little bit of play, which is to be expected from a $5 knife. It came with the pocket clip. You're going to have, you know, that much poking out, but that $5.00. Um, blade shape, I wouldn't even know what to call that. The grind is definitely iffy. I can feel it's a little bit off to this side, up for you. There is kind of a choil, but all you're going to get into the, in there is a fingertip. Nothing further, because that's just edge. So, you could almost call that a finger choil. Um, comfortable to close. There is some jimping on the liner, and there is some jimping on the spine, which is a little too aggressive and is slightly uncomfortable. The handle itself is kind of small, as a uh, comparison here is the backlash. And it side by side. I can get four fingers on the backlash. And only three on here without kind of slipping off. Um, lanyard hole. Check. Wow. That's, yeah. And it appears to be, what's that? You know, this pocket clip reminds me of, uh, where'd it go? that 
kind of. So the Kershaw Lake is kind of what I'm kind of getting the pocket clip vibe of. Let's see, this is a T7. Oh my darn. That is either a T8 or a T7, but it appears reactive too. No, it's a T8. Um, but the pocket clip screws appear to be the same deal. There's a screw here, screw here, and the primary there. Would I take apart this knife? Probably not. It's probably got, like, red Loctite in there, so. Um, let's have a sharpness test. I brought printer paper. I know, I remembered this time. Actually, with a little bit of work, that's not the sharpest thing in the world, but for five dollars, I wasn't expecting it to cut paper at all. Here is the Backlash for comparison, uh, which does need to be sharpened as well. It's also kind of weird on the camera, but you can see it's just a little smoother when I can, you know, not be an idiot. Because I have a dull spot in the middle from cutting all the cardboard at work. But there's the point. I also got some cheap Walmart paracord just for stuff like this. So, all right, it cuts paracord okay. So, that's. Um, probably not going to be consistent. You could get a model that's a lot duller. You could get one that's more sharp than this is. Um, the Ergos, aside from the fact that this is falling off, there aren't really any hot spots. I mean, this kind of digs in a little, but not like it's a game changer. The jimping, when you're not really, really digging into it, actually isn't that uncomfortable. And the choil again, is barely a choil. Um, I'd say the blade shape is somewhat reminiscent of a squid, but the squid's blade, I know, is smaller than this. So, that is my first impressions and thoughts. Um, my first test. Also, note that it is very, very, very far hung to the right. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to carry this thing for two weeks, see how bad it really is. And at the end of this, I'm going to do a little mini torture test where I ding up the blade and see um, just how not hardened this actually is. That's all for tonight, guys. Thank you for watching. Transmix in the description below. High Brass Bead Coat in the description below. I hand make beads. If you're interested, hit me up. Um... If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments below. And maybe subscribe. Have a good one, guys.